Mr. Bray Wyatt. You and your rambles that makes absolutely no sense. You make the ultimate warrior sound like a Rhodes Scholar. And you, Mr. Luke Harper. What the f are you talking about? Anyway, hey, I'm the Machine 2.0. This is the RMSS show, Rumble Mania Slam Survivor Show. Here today talking about wrestling as we do every week. And today is what? Today is March 21st. Uh, what is this? Uh, spring is right around the corner, a few days from now, or whenever it starts. Uh, but anyway, uh, as you know, I'm in New York and it's snow today. Pretty amazing. But anyway, let's go on to the WWE news. Sorry, let's, let me rephrase that. Let's go on to the wrestling news because I'm starting off today's show with some TNA type info. So I'm um, busy week in the world of wrestling, especially in TNA. Two of their twelve year, two of their mainstays, Eric Young and Bobby Roode, are leaving. Both Eric Young and Bobby Roode was part of the company for um, twelve years from the, from his start. Um, their the I would say franchise type players, along with AJ Styles, when TNA took off, and um. Right now, uh, apparently they, they, they asked for the release and uh, they were released and um, I think they, they were released after um, their last taping, which was this week or last week, excuse me, and um, they're now free agents. Who knows if they're going indie level or if they're going to WWE and playing with the big boys or NXT. Um, right now, um, I think um, the two talents are definitely WWE material. Um, let me rephrase that. De definitely WWE talent. As far as material, that's in the eyes of Vince McMahon and Triple H. Now, as far as um, Eric Young is involved, in my opinion, I think he has the in-ring ring talent, in-ring skills. Um, don't think he has the in-ring look or the outer ring look for Vince McMahon and Triple H. Uh, he's short in stature, bearded, uh, bald, and uh, a la... Uh, Daniel Bryan, which Vince McMahon never really was too fond of anyway to begin with. So, um, as far as how far he could go if he makes the WWE roster, I don't see him being no more than a mid-card act. Um, as far as uh, his um, uh, other things about Eric Young, um, if you're not a huge Eric Young fan, I was, and I loved his... Um, his 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 championship run that he had, his last run that he had, which paralleled the um the run that uh, Daniel Bryant had in WWE with, with his title. They they kind of happened around the same time. I think Eric Young was a little bit later than than, than Daniel Bryant's, but almost um it's like almost like TNA had borrowed the same storyline of of uh, Daniel Bryan's story, having the small, short, statured, in ring talent. Uh, talented underdog winning the title and holding the title for the company at that time. Um, uh, like I said, it's up to Vince. And as long as Vince is here, those short guys are really not going to be pushed the way they should be pushed. Um, a little bit more about Eric Young. He had a show, I think it was on, um, not sure if it was an Animal Planet, but I know it was an outdoor show where he was doing a lot of extreme uh, like 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 sledding and and, and and trying out extreme uh, winter sports and stuff like that and and he was on, on in canoes and water and all that stuff. He's a real outdoorsman, Canadian, and um, I think I liked his charisma on the show, and I think he could be um, definitely a player if they portray him right. If he does decide to come to WWE or NXT. Moving on to um, Mr. Bobby Roode, who um, definitely, in the eyes of Vince McMahon, and his, which meets his criteria, uh, the look, the um, stature, the, the, the um, in-ring persona, the outer ring persona, just the way he, um, he is. And I, I see um, Bobby Roode getting a push, if that's even a thing anymore. I see Bobby Roode, uh, you know, 
if that's a thing for anybody else besides Roman Reigns or John Cena. But um, I could see him getting a, um, a minor push, being um, an upper mid-card player, maybe even a main event if they, they even feel him that, that, that severely. Uh, <clears throat> I think um, Bobby Roode... Uh, Bobby Roode, uh, Tom NXT was, um, you know, he's, he had uh, all the belts, uh, and I think he could come to WWE and make some noise and be the, um, be a upper mid card player from the gate. Uh, been there for 12 years, he's the vet in the ring, he knows how to, how to do his thing, so, uh, just put the guy in the roster and made the guy do his thing. Um, here we go with this Andre Giant Memorial, uh, which is going to be a match in, w, in, a, in, a, in a WrestleMania, which who really cares? Anyway, um, moving on to some more wrestling news, um, WWE news. Um, this is WrestleMania season, 13 days away. Uh, I still don't know the whole, the, the whole um, card yet. And I guess we're still figuring things out. And they're going to be figuring and tinkering with things to the last minute, I guess. Uh, we'll find out tonight who's going to be fighting Kevin Owens. If it's not a multi-man match, it might be just a one-on-one -on -one match for the IC title. Um, here's my advice on this. Him and AJ Styles had two great matches. Um, early tonight, they started off the show. They were Well, they didn't start off the show, but it was the first match of the show. And they actually had Philly, because they have Philly right now, they had Philly popping. Um, as far as the SmackDown match, awesome too. Um, he needs to retire. But anyway, uh, the match was, um, was was pretty epic, in my opinion. I mean, it was one of the better um, Raw matches, uh, definitely the best Raw match of 2016 so far. Um, the one that had SmackDown was pretty good too. It was interrupted by um, Y2J at the end, costing uh, AJ Styles the match. Same thing happened again tonight. Uh, Y2J came down and interfered, and KO got the win, the W again. Um, uh, AJ Styles and KO have a lot of chemistry in that ring. They need to make that a, a match, a thing. But I mean, I don't know. They need. It might not happen at WrestleMania, but they need to make this like either a SummerSlam match or something. Because AJ Styles and, and 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 pretty much whoever you put AJ Styles in the ring with, he's going to bring down the house. So I think that they need to um, put promote that. Let's talk. How, let's talk about how today's show um, started. And I think. Um, I give uh, WWE an A for, for, for what they did. Um, they had to start over with Stephanie McMahon. She came down to the ring, did her little spiel. Um, as far as she told talked about her husband, Triple H, not being there tonight because he had to take, take care of some corporate business. Okay, great. Um, so um, with that being said, uh, she showed what happened uh, the week before with, 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 with Roman and Triple H. And uh, with that being said, you had to expect Mr. Reigns to come out. And Re Reigns came out and um, he pretty much um, cut off Stephanie. Um, kept it short and sweet. But one thing you got to remember, they're in Philadelphia. Philly doesn't like Roman Reigns. Philly is a tough crowd. Uh, they literally booed him as soon as he came out, booed him as he walked down, booed him as he entered the ring, booed him as he did whatever he did to, um, Stephanie, booed him every time he spoke. They need to make this guy a heel. They need to do a double face turn, a double a heel face turn at WWE WrestleMania 32 in that championship match in order, especially if it's the last match of the night. If it's the main event, which it is being promoted as, they need to do a face, a double face heel turn in order to make people leave Dallas happy and feeling like, hey, listen, I spent that 
I do however much money they spent to, to go in there, a thousand dollars and all bought all this merchandise and I felt I got a good show and I felt like I got my money's worth. Just like how people from in San Francisco last year felt they got their money's worth when they seen Seth Rollins cash in. Uh they have to make the, the, the correct call on that. There's no way this guy is getting over. He's just not getting over. And uh, they proved it in Philly. You know I mean, you know, it's just Philly. So Philly could just be rough. But even besides that, there's other arenas that he go in and he's just not being, he's just not getting that, 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 that he's not getting over like he should. So why don't we just make this guy heal? Do a double face turn and make him a heel champ. Since you want to give it to him. Or Mr. King. <laughs> make him a heel champ and call it a day. Why, you know, bullshit with this. So anyway, he came down to the ring and he shushed um, Stephanie and, and, you know, did a little thing. And then he spoke for a little bit. Kept it short and sweet. Kept that. First segment at only 10 minutes, which they like to drag on that first segment and make it a good 20, 20, 25 minutes sometimes. And they kept it short and sweet, and I loved it. And I think that's what they need to do with, 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 with Roman more often instead of having doing a, a long promo or having new promos at all. Just keep it short and sweet. Keep it like Goldberg. When Goldberg first came out. But, um... They need to find some type of way to make this guy. What's going on here? This is dumb. A guided choke slam, the softest choke slam in the history of choke slams. But um, <laughs> but you know, it's just what are we gonna do with Roman Reigns? Um, could they, you know, could they keep him as a face and he be accepted? It's not happening. It's just not happening. And you know, um, hopefully we're not forced to suffer through this anymore. Make him a heel, make Seth Rollins come back as a the, the number one face, and <laughs> yes, Van Dam. I even know he's still on the roster, but that's good because. That was the worst thing that ever happened, in my opinion. They tried to put it over. I, I got it. They tried to put over Van Dango in his first match ever. Have him, um... And that's when Jericho's there. Whenever Jericho's there, somebody's getting put over. Whoever he's feuding with is getting put over. So, I still don't think they should have made him lose. There's a lot of decisions WWE make in WrestleMania events, like last year, Extinction and Lost. Uh, at all to Triple H, I didn't see the logic behind it, and they totally wasted Sting's um, WWE um, career. It put it in a bad direction, and it, it kept on going worse and worse after that. Uh, Van Dango, Jericho got him over, and that was it. He had a little song and dance going on for a little bit. He had it going on in New York City subways. But other than that, it didn't really go no, no much further with that, with Van Dango. So, he never had a belt, never had an IC belt, never was in the IC title um, contention, never was in the USA USA belt con contention. It just didn't make no sense with Van Dango. I never got why Chris Jericho put him over. Chris Jericho is one of my all-time favorites, and he should have had him win in that match. I was, I was honestly, those two losses, the one with Sting last year, and the one with Chris Jericho two, three, three years ago when it was in New York, Sucked and that made me it pissed me off because those are Jericho is one of my favorite all time if not my top favorite and um Sting is definitely Sting a legend 
you don't have these two rules. And those two, when it took, they tell me they lost, I was totally and utterly pissed off and disgusted. So, anyway, that's wrapping up for today. Um, it's funny that this is WrestleMania season, 13 days from WrestleMania, and there's not really a lot to talk about. Who, who's Bray? Who's Bray fighting? Is he going to be in the Andre Giant Memorial and that's it? And that's going to be on the pre-show. If he's in it, he got to win it. That's so, and then push him after that, and then push him into to SummerSlam, and then make him one of the top heels. If you don't turn Roman heel and make him the top heel, the champ heel. Other than that, um, what else is there to talk about about WrestleMania? What Shane and 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 Undertaker last week, the little. A little pushing match they had, a little punching, a little choke slam. I mean, that was really. We still trying to figure out where they gonna go, what direction they gonna go with that match, and how they gonna make it. First of all, they can't make Shane win clean, cause then that that takes away from Taker's legacy. Taker wins. What was the point of the whole Shane being there? Cause now Vince and Triple H and Stephanie just keeps control. So what was the whole point of Shane? It has to be a run in. Even though it's in Hell in a Cell. But anyway, a big announcement is going to be made tonight about that Hell in a Cell match. I'll get back to you. Um, must apologize. Last two weeks I didn't do a Promo King video. And just been, bah, tired. But anyway, I'll try my best to get one out tonight. And um, what else is uh, there to say about WrestleMania? Like, um, let's just get on with it already. And then hopefully, so, you know, keep our fingers crossed. And it's still a good show. And... I mean, you know, hopefully some surprises and some things go right and some correct calls are made on on behalf of creative staff and Vince and Triple H and, and Stephanie. But other than that, all we could do is just dream and keep our fingers crossed. So anyway, I'm The Machine 2.0. Um, like and subscribe. Comment below if there's any questions. Send it to our Gmail at rmssshow at gmail.com. rmssshow at gmail.com. Once again, follow us on Instagram at the Rumble Mania Slam Survivor Show. The Rumble Mania Slam Survivor Show written all the way out. I'm the Machine 2.0. Kenny V, Bruce Rude, they're all there waiting for your questions and, and comments and likes and subscribes. So hit us up. And um, I'm going to go upstairs and watch the rest of um, Raw tonight. Peace.